this topic of today has been fascinating me since a very, very long time. As a counselor who primarily works with adults, because we have very good team members who are excellent with children, I normally spend most of my time interacting with uh, adults. And when I'm trying to help an adult to understand himself or herself and to you know, put things in order or to try and uh, give a better direction of life, etc. Sometimes I come across situations where people seem to be stuck or people seem to be going off track without any logical reason. You must have seen this around you. Somebody comes and says, no, 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 I don't agree with that. I don't like to do things that way. So you say, okay, can you explain why? What is it that you don't uh, like? No, I don't know. I'm not uh, uh, particular. I don't know exactly and I don't want to get into the reasoning. But um, no, I can't do it uh, that way. I don't like this uh, method. I don't like that attitude. I don't like this. So many people keep saying that. In fact, you may not even realize even you do it. The other person is getting puzzled, but to you, it is something which is very firm. You say, no, I will not accept this. I will not do that. Or I prefer to do things only in this particular uh, way and no other way. If you stop, introspect, go back, you know, do a review, you will find more often than not that it was because of certain childhood experiences. What happened to you in your childhood determined you know, what you are today. Even though we know that this is a uh, fact, and even though people, have, experts have told us that our childhood plays an extremely important role in what we are uh, uh, today, somewhere we keep it at the theoretical level. We do not use it at a practical level to understand how, what, and most important, what to do about it. See, one is to be aware of something. The other is to actually say that, okay, this is the issue. What do I do about uh, the uh, thing? There are so many great people I can list out, you know, who have said that your childhood plays a very important role in what you are as an adult. It includes people no less than Mahatma Gandhi, the father of uh, modern psychotherapy, Sigmund Freud, great educationists, so many of them. Particularly, I would like to mention Dr. Maria Montessori. All these are people who have laid a lot of emphasis and given us the inputs that Whatever you are today as an adult, whatever you do, whatever your behavior, your attitudes, your value system, so many of these things are in a great way governed by what your childhood experiences were. So what do I do about it? My childhood is over. It is gone. So what's the point in telling me? There's a lot that still can be uh, done. But we have to start off by giving significance to it. As you are aware, the study of the brain, neurology, has been progressing very rapidly in the last few years. The brain is the last frontier of medical science. If we know 90% of the rest of the body, we know only 10% of the brain. But of late, the scenario is changing. There's a lot of research going on in what we refer to as cognitive sciences. The science of the thinking pattern, which of course emanates from the brain. Neurologists have been telling us a lot about the formation of the brain, the thinking patterns, all these things in the childhood and how they affect us when the brain formation has been completed in the first few years. And today you are an adult and you are doing whatever you uh, um, can. Let us start off with as I mentioned, childhood experiences. Most of us have been lucky to have loving, caring parents. 
they wanted to give the best of us. There have been there are parents who are willing to give their life for the sake of their child. They love the child so much. They go out of the way. Many mothers have given up their own professions, careers, their own personal interests for the sake of giving a good upbringing to the uh, child. Many fathers have gone slogging away, putting in a lot of hard work, going on and on and on, putting in more and more efforts. Why? Because they feel that they should earn enough so that they can provide a good future for their uh, child. All this has been done. But the one thing that is of significance is that good intentions do not get results. I have not good but excellent intentions. I want, as I said, no, I want to give everything to my child. I want to even sacrifice my life for the sake of my child. That is my intention. But what is my action? My actions will determine whether the child will get what I'm talking about or not. Take a very simplistic example, which I keep reminding people. You have a small child, a baby, and the baby <coughs> is slowly coming to the stage where he first learns how to turn over in the bed. Then he learns how to sit up. Then he learns how to stand and he is now trying to learn how to take the first few steps forward. If he can learn how to walk, then he will become independent. It's a great milestone in his life no? that he can start walking, he can start moving around. Everybody would like their child to learn that. But with very good intentions, if a parent says, Whenever my child got up to walk, he fell down. And he has been hurting himself. He is crying. So I don't think it is worth it. What I will do is wherever the child wants to go, I will tell him, no, 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 don't try to walk. I'll lift you up. How heavy is the child? I can easily lift the child and carry him or her wherever the child wants to go. So you see, you have excellent intentions. You want to protect your child. You want safety of your uh, child, right? But what are you actually doing? You're making the child into a cripple. Because you're not allowing him to learn how to walk, something so basic. The same thing happens at the cognitive level. Are we allowing the child to question, to explore, and to find answers for himself or herself? Or as is happening in real life today, are we thrusting things down the throat of the child? The whole education system which lays out a syllabus and portions. Every teacher is told, regardless of anything else, you have to complete the portion. Now, unfortunately, life doesn't have a syllabus or portion. Nobody knows what tomorrow will bring. Nobody knows what knowledge and what information and what wisdom you need to spend a good quality of life. But what we do know is that if I learn how to manage life, if I learn how to face challenges of life, then Regardless of what ups and downs come in my life, I will be able to handle them. If you take, for example, the uh, 10 life skills which World Health Organization enunciated 25 years uh, uh, back. Decision making, problem solving. Two very significant areas of life skills. Now the question is, are we teaching the children how to take decisions and solve uh, problems or are we making it easier by giving the child a syllabus, a portion and telling him that just mug up this and put it down in the exam? The exams of life are not like the exams that children face in classrooms. They are totally different. 
and yet we are not doing anything to prepare for it. So what happens is certain things which are drilled into the child's mind, the child grows up with that. There are a lot of good things also which are drilled into a child's mind. A lot of values, morals, principles, whatever you want to call it. And that becomes like a solid foundation and pillar for the child to lead a good quality of uh, uh, life. Yes. But what I am more concerned uh, uh, about is that we also put in a lot into the child's mind, which is counterproductive, which can actually affect the child's life in future. Now, what happens is that the child's life in the initial years is very restricted. Firstly, the number of people. And that too, in today's era of you know, nuclear families, one child or two child families, in all these, what is uh, happening is the child at home has maximum one, two lucky to have a third person in the uh, house. Same day, the teacher, the school, all these things are very restrictive. So what happens? Whatever the elders say, parents, grandparents, teachers, they become sacrosanct. They become the Bible truth. No changes uh, in that. Everything goes by that. And we, without even realizing, we carry that through. Children believe anything and everything that their elders say. You will see one small fellow. He has got into an argument with one of his peers or classmates. You know what he does? If he can't throw his weight around, he will tell him, you wait, my daddy will beat up your daddy. This fellow's daddy may be one puny character and the other fellow's daddy may be a great bodybuilder. It makes no difference. My daddy will beat up your daddy. Why does he say things like that? Because he believes that daddy is the ultimate. Daddy is like a superman. And therefore, whatever daddy says is the absolute truth. And it gets so deeply uh, ingrained that we do not even realize how much we are pushing this down the throat of uh, the children and how it is affecting daily uh, life. Let me give you a case study that happened many, many years uh, uh, back. I met this gentleman who was in his 50s, had done very well in his career and was in a very senior position in a good company, which is very rare now in the corporate world. He was actually enjoying his work and he was going up the ladder. He was earning well. Everything was going very fine. But somehow he had developed some sort of a low self-esteem. I'm not good enough. I need to do better. This is not good enough. Anything that I would talk to him, he would keep saying, no, I'm not good enough. This is not good enough. I should have been much more higher. If I'm earning one rupee, I should have been earning two rupees. If I have one car, I should have had two cars. If I'm in this uh, position, I should have been in that uh, position. And another thing that I noticed was anything and everything, he would bring his elder brother into the picture. My elder brother is doing so much better. My elder brother is so great. My elder brother has done this. My elder brother is an achiever. Hey, I'm talking about you, man. Let us discuss about you. But he would inevitably bring his elder brother into the picture. Took a long time to slowly get around him and get you know him to open out. And then the whole story came tumbling out. These two brothers, hardly difference of one and a half year between the two of them, they lost their father at a very early age. And the mother, the single parent, really slogged it out to give a good future to these boys. And she was so concerned that they should do well, that she would always keep pressurizing them, pushing them, literally forcing them to do well. 
Now, as it inevitably happens between two siblings, the elder brother was some sort of an achiever. He used to, you know, score well. He used to get some, you know, rewards. He used to get good marks. And the younger brother was made to feel that unless you come to that standard, you are not good enough. <clears throat> With all good intentions the mother inevitably used to compare this person with the elder brother. She did it with good intentions, as I told you. Almost all parents do it with good intentions. But it became so ingrained in him. It brought down his self-esteem so much. As I told you, he was well into his 50s. He would not acknowledge whatever his achievements are. He had a very wonderful loving, caring wife. He had a couple of very nice children who were doing extremely well in life. But all that didn't matter to him. And even at that age, what he would be doing inevitably is trying to please his mother. And unfortunately, even at that age, for example, you know, when he built a house, a dream house of his, which he had been planning for years and years. He finally built that dream house. And when his mother came to see it, she praised him. She said, yes, you've done a good job. You built a nice house and all that. But she let in one statement. You know, your brother's house somehow is much better than this. Finished, full stop. All his joy, all his efforts, all his achievement of having built his dream house is gone in one statement. I'm telling you this real life story just to help you understand the significance of how much childhood plays in our uh, you know, life. Sometimes when parents drill something into us, it becomes, as I said, the gospel truth. I will do only that because that's what has been taught to me. Sometimes it's the other way around. If parents put in too much pressure, the child rebels. And he goes off into the other extreme, saying, I will do anything but what my parents are asking me to do. And when he grows up as an adult, he doesn't even realize how much his decisions of today are being implemented, you know, influenced by his childhood. Things which he could not uh, you know, resolve at that uh, time. In CBT language, cognitive behavior therapy, we call this, you know, cognitive distortions, false beliefs. Somewhere our logical mind is telling us something different, but our emotional mind says, since this was told to me when I was small and it was told to me by people whom I love, respect and regard, it has to be true. And even if I doubt it is true, I will still continue to follow the same uh, thing. This is what I want us to be aware of. I know of adults, for example, who spend a lot of money on their children to the extent that they spoil them. Even when people tell them that, you know, this is not a nice thing to do. Why are you buying such expensive things for your child? No, he's my only child, no. Why am I working? I'm working for his sake. No? If I can't give him the best of everything, then what's the point in my working so hard? Okay, fine. But make the person sit down, open out and talk in depth. You know what? Slowly will come out. My father never used to give me money. My father was very strict. Even if I wanted 50 paisa for an ice cream, he wouldn't give it to me. I went through my entire childhood that way. So now I want to make sure that my son gets everything that he wants. What do you think is the outcome of that? The child becomes a spoiled brat. Intentions of the parent are excellent. Result is negative. And the parent does not even realize that he is doing this primarily because of what influence he had. So as I told you, not only uh, you know following what uh, uh, 
the uh, uh, happened in your childhood and what was told to you by your elders and your uh, no, parents we need to from time to time review am i taking this decision am i doing this because it has been indoctrinated and pushed into my mind when i was a child if you sit down and make a list of the type of things which were told to you and drilled into your mind when you were in your you know, days when you were coming up in life the growing years the list will be very exhaustive i can tell you so the point comes okay once i have agreed uh, to do this what do i need to uh, do the first thing is to understand that within one generation lifestyles have changed completely what was relevant when i was a child is no longer relevant today i have to move with the times i have to not only adapt to change i have to anticipate change and i have to behave as an adult independently not being influenced by what happened to me in my childhood the second thing we need to do is to resolve if i have strong emotions i'm still very angry with my father because he never gave me money to spend i somehow feel that my mother could have been more uh, uh, you know exhaustive i mean supportive when i was going through this this, this crisis she was never bad to me she never scolded me she never put me down but when i expected her to support me she didn't do it and even today i carry the that grudge against my mother this is another very important factor that unresolved emotions of our childhood carry through into our adult life and a lot of things that we do primarily with the concerned person like how i behave with my father or how i behave with my mother because of the issues which are unresolved but also like i told you how i behave as a parent because of the way my parent behaved with uh, me and thirdly it is amazing but true the way i behave with other people nothing to do with parenting or growing up i have colleagues in office i have neighbors i have friends my interaction with them my behavior and the way i deal with them a lot of it gets influenced by the unresolved issues which you know i have not been able to do so what i have done is that i have uh, you know made out a few very simple very practical and time proven tips and techniques about what you actually need to do because every time i take up a topic i ensure that i leave you with a takeaway which you can use in order to bring about an improvement or a change in your life that's the whole purpose otherwise anybody can sit and give a bhashan on what happened but you should be able to utilize uh, this in your life so here is a very simple slide made by sunita which is going to tell us how to you know review your childhood by doing some self introspection in that number 1 is check out all your values principles morals including superstitions which were drilled into uh, you i hope it is readable first one don't go to the second the values principles ah now you can read it better i'm sure values principles morals and including superstition don't forget that a lot of things which we feel are traditions and which have to be upheld are actually superstitions so i would request you very sincerely take time off tomorrow is sunday see whether you get time do it on a continuous basis not just once where you keep going back to your past 
if you have some elders available to you please use them as a means to introspect and recall childhood memories which may have faded out a little so what was the value system taught to me what were the principles what were the morals and what was the superstitions and other things that were taught to me at that time make a list of them and ask yourself which are the ones which are applicable now that is very important okay then comes the point are you for or against parental teaching sometimes i told you no we become so much for it that this is what my father or my mother said so regardless of anything i'll follow only that i don't even want to debate i don't want to question it this is what my father did and he was such a great guy and i you know regard him so much that i will not do anything else sometimes it goes the other way around because i told you no because my father never gave me money so i am going to go on splurging money on my child so check which of these you come into what we need actually is to remove everything from your days of growing up and how parenting was done by you and how what was influenced even teachers for example all the elders will remember that the teacher used to walk in with either a cane or a you know scale or something and start beating up the children can we do it today no we can't the world has changed lifestyles have changed then comes the third uh, one forgive your elders but acknowledge the damage that they may have inadvertently done with you forgiveness plays a very important role till you forgive your stuck firstly you have to start off with becoming aware that my elders my teacher my parent my grandfather whoever it is had very good intentions but they did certain things which have affected my life today as an adult so i am going to forgive on the one side and on the other side i will acknowledge that damage has been done then and then only i can move on to the fourth uh, uh, steps that is coming into the present and asking yourself are your present relationships influenced by your childhood particularly partner children parents with whoever you have close relationships together ask yourself are your present relationships influenced by your childhood you'll be amazed how the awakening comes over a period of time and you start realizing that yes it has played a significant uh, uh, role and that takes us to the fifth and last and the most important point that is make a sort of you know checklist make an action plan what are the changes that i need to do i cannot continue to live in the past i have to move on into the future very simple but very practical uh, you know tips you can expand on this you can add a few more points depending on what sort of uh, relationships and what sort of upbringing you have uh, um, had but if you continue to do this thing, and this self introspection exercise should not be just done once and left again after a few weeks few months do it again when your situation in life changes do it again the more you keep doing it the more you will realize that you will be able to get rid of unwanted influences of your childhood and move on by taking in the good things that have come into you which have been imbibed into you from your childhood and move on to have a better quality of adult uh, life okay so with that i think i will take my well deserved one minute break and i can already see a lot of nice interesting question that have come up i'll start off with them immediately after a quick one minute break in which you know sima is going to give you some very nice informative tips and then i'll be back uh, 
Hello. Good morning. So Ali has given us, uh, you know, the real life uh, situation. This is what happens in a counseling session. You know, people are uh, always asking, how does my problems today, you know, how do all these problems, how are they influenced by my childhood? I don't want to touch my past. I don't want to go there. Right. And see, I mean, by, by whatever uh, Ali is discussing so far, how those things uh, manifest in various forms and, uh, you know, disturb us in our adult life. So uh, this is what actually when you say you go to a counselor, this is what happens. This is what happens in a real life counseling scenario where we actually take our clients back to the childhood to understand all the unresolved issues. Right. So uh, and uh, like we keep talking about a diploma in counseling skills program. The reason that that program starts off, you know, we cover the entire lifespan and the reason why we start with childhood, you know, which are those foundation years so crucial in a, you know, in uh, your life and which reflects in the adult life, all those insecurities, the self-esteem issues when our counselees come in their adult uh, life, when we track it back to the childhood, we realize that, yeah, there are all those unresolved issues out there. And the whole idea of counseling is that to come out with that, to talk about it, to become aware of it, to see, you know, to reflect how we can resolve that. And that is what gives you calmness. So that is what a counseling session actually is all about. Right. So, yeah, we can tell you more about the diploma in counseling skill. One year program, part time program doesn't come in the way of your work. So it's a very, very, uh, you know, it, it gives you that calmness. It gives you probably many students end up saying that, you know, it, today I'm a better version of myself after going through the entire program. So it is not only for your self growth and development, also to become a professional counselor. Right. And one more very interesting program, which Ali is uh, coming up with, it's called enriching life through death. Yeah, that's the topic. Now, this is going to be done by Ali himself. So this is for all our Banja rights. If you remember last year, we had done something on CBT. So Ali will be giving these very small, just, you know, uh, uh, you know, just two, three sentences uh, kind of uh, uh, activity every day for three weeks. This will be starting on 23rd of uh, May and he will be giving you just have to spend five to ten minutes on those uh, particular assignments that he will be giving post which, you know, end of the week, you'll collate all of that, send it back to Ali. Ali himself will be going through that and he will be giving his comments. So this will go on for three weeks. And uh, the whole idea behind this is that it's going to definitely add, you know, when you uh, enrich your life through death, that, you know, what happens is that you learn to value your life, your blessings, your relationships, and so many other things. So, yeah, that's a very interesting activity coming up. Do call us for details. We'll give you all the details, right? So, thank you so much. Back to Ali. Okay, so I shall go a little higher up because the chat box has a lot of interesting things. I think the first one that came in right in the beginning was from Vidya. Why is it that a psychotherapist say that if you have cruel childhood, then you will have some kind of psychological issue during your adult age? How is the adult life connected with childhood? As I already explained to you in the last few minutes, adult life is very closely connected to childhood. But the lessons that we learn is our choice. So I don't believe that every person who has had a cruel childhood or an oppressive childhood will have some sort of psychological issue. There are people who actually learn certain lessons of life. I was beaten up by my fa father, so I will make sure that I will never beat my child because I know what is the bad impact of violence. I have realized what it means to be deprived where, you know, even you're craving for a 50 paise ice cream and you don't get that. So I will now balance out and see how, you know, other people, my children, whoever it is, they don't get deprived of i learn how to value money and to go about things in a proper uh, uh, manner so remember that the choice is yours you can do what you want with your life based on your experiences 
Ha, Saraf Saab always joins us all the way from Maharashtra. He says the way and environment in which parents live is quite different than that of their children. So let them live their own way, rather burdening them with your own values. Yes, Saraf Saab, that's a very, you know, mature thought, I would say. But I would also like to caution a little bit that somewhere certain things like some core values that should be incorporated, isn't it? I always believe that there are values of being and values of giving. The second category, values of giving, are the ones that affect everybody else. So how I do, for example, financial transactions? Do I take advantage of a weak person and, you know, take maximum out of uh, him in a money transaction? That is a value of giving, a value which of dishonesty which affects the other person. So these are things I would definitely want. We should all incorporate in our children or any child for that uh, matter. So that the child understand that there are certain things which are non-negotiable. Other than that, I agree with Saraf sir. Let the child learn in the way he wants to. Surekha has a very nice question. How do we help our counselees to build their self-esteem, which has been beaten down by unpleasant childhood experiences? Glad you brought this up, Surekha, because I keep reminding people that our self-esteem, bulk of it, is made or destroyed in our childhood. So if you find a person who has got low self-esteem, you must be coming across people, you know, for example, Somebody who is an achiever, like I gave you the example of that gentleman who was in his 50s and who had done well in life. But whenever I would tell him that, oh, you achieved so much, you are in such a nice position, you have got such a respectable thing, you have, you have so much savings, you have given such a good education to your children. He would always have <coughs> arguments against it that I'm not good enough. That is what we refer to as low self-esteem. Now, building up self-esteem is difficult, but not impossible. I have, in fact, made a small workbook on self-esteem at whatever age, whatever stage of life you are in to build back or to enhance your uh, uh, self-esteem. There are ways and means of doing it. For want of time, you know, I'm not going too deep into it right now. But those of you who are you know, concerned about this particular uh, issue and you should be concerned, whether it's for yourself or whether it's for anybody whom you care for, we should help the person build up that self-esteem or self-worth, which is not ego or which is not boasting or which is what, but acknowledging that, yes, I am a capable human being. I am a person who deserves the best in uh, life. And it can be uh, done if we work on uh, it. Right. Vidya says, is it wrong to scold or at times hit the child just because his adulthood may be get affected? Let me put it this way. Not because his adulthood may be affected, but his present is going to be affected. A typical child psychology is like this. I have done something wrong. I was told to do my homework. I didn't do it. I was told not to play with that fragile thing. I played with it and it fell down and it broke. I was told to come back home at 6.30. I came back only at uh, 7 o'clock. Every child inside his mind realizes and acknowledges that I have done something bad. I have broken rules. I have made my parent or my teacher unhappy with my actions. That guilt, that uneasiness is already playing in the child's mind. Now, you give that child a very, very heavy dose of scolding and you hit the child. You know what the child thinks? Yes, I did something bad and I got my punishment. I was hit, no? So now I paid the price for it. Now I have a clean slate and I can start doing what I want to do. So you are taking away that opportunity for the child to introspect, to feel guilty, to feel the desire to bring about a change. And yes, definitely, 
it will affect his childhood, I mean, adulthood uh, also. We cannot predict, as I told you, the outcome of certain negative experiences cannot be put in a category and said, this is what will happen. But things do happen. It will have an impact. As far as you know, hitting a child is concerned, capital punishment as we call it, there is no doubt left now by behavioral scientists who have told us that in this generation now, 21st century children, any form of violence hitting a child is absolutely not to be done. Maybe if it's a very small child who's just not listening to you, you can give him one back and pull him away from whatever he's doing, small things like that. But the moment the child starts growing a little older, there is no way. I know of families where even teenagers and grown-up children are hit by their uh, uh, elders. I think that's a horrible thing that we are doing. And we are taking the risk that the child may grow up and have either psychological disturbances or his behavior may be bad towards others because he has been told, he has been given that uh, you know feeling that hitting is okay. Hitting can be a means of doing, getting what you uh, want. He may become violent with uh, you know, his adults and peers and all these uh, people because somewhere it is ingrained into him by his own respected elders that hitting is okay. That is the reason why uh, so. Asushmita has asked when is the uh, course starting. Please look up either our website or give a call to uh, the office. The phone numbers are being put up right now over here. Our old landline numbers we have removed because we were having too much trouble. So some of you have been associated with Banjara for a long time and they still try that landlines, you know, and then they say, cannot get through. So they have this problem. Please understand that we now have two, uh, you know, functional mobile uh, phone lines, which are available 930 to 530. You can call up on any of these two numbers, which we will be putting up uh, 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 right now. As far as DCS is concerned, as uh, Seema told you, admissions are going on in full stream right uh, now. And we have started the process also this month of making them doing their introspection and looking back into their life and filling up certain questionnaires and having a dialogue and all that. So all that has already uh, you know, started. Now, Roshan says, one second. Yeah, being encouraged. Uh, going up and down. Yeah. Yeah, being encouraged in childhood gives confidence in adulthood. Today, I'm able to face challenges all by myself. See, here is a good role model to you. When Roshan was encouraged by her elders, whoever were the significant uh, elders, it lays such a strong foundation that I can face a lot of challenges in adulthood. You see, uh, childhood is an era of fantasy. So we start believing in a lot of imaginary uh, things, a lot of things, you know, which are in the world of uh, uh, the fairy tales and all these things. And if somewhere there the message that reaches is, I am a capable person. I have received praise, acknowledgement, encouragement. That means my self-worth is good. I am a good child. And I grow up into a good human uh, being. Surekha says, how can we help our counselees not to be manipulated by others because of a craving for love which was deprived by parents in their childhood? Yes, that's a very nice point which Surekha has brought out. You know, people who grow up feeling that they have not been given love by their parents. Feeling, that's the underlying word. The parents may swear and say that we not only love our child, we are willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of our child. But the funny thing is that love has not reached the child. The child is not convinced that my parents love me. A simple thing like if parents keep on praising and admiring when the child gets good uh, marks. 
and suddenly become very angry and very distant when the child gets bad marks. What is the message being sent to the child? We don't love you because of who you are. We love you because of your marks. And the child detaches himself from the marks and says, my parents don't actually love uh, me. Now, when that starts uh, happening, you will find these situations like what Rekha, uh, Surekha has said, that you know, people get manipulated by others. There's a craving for love. You'll find this girl, you know, who felt that my parents don't really love me and don't shower me with love and affection, don't express their love to me. And some absolutely good for nothing boy turns up and just goes on praising her. And she falls head over heels in love with that person. And that is how she gets manipulated, which is what Surekha has uh, pointed out. Now, you need to help that person by saying, Forget about your relationship. Forget about who's manipulating you and how much you are getting influenced by others. Let us work on yourself. Are you a complete human being by yourself? Do you feel satisfied? Do you feel that I am complete by myself? Do I feel that I don't have to necessarily lean on somebody or depend on somebody? for my fulfillment or for my happiness. Once you lift your person, your counselee, whoever it is, to that level, you will find that that person will not get manipulated by others, will have a mind of his or her uh, uh, own. These are some very, very simple but significant uh, uh, points. Uh, Vinita says, Ali, it's very true. I also think initial years of childhood have a long lasting impact on us, sometimes permanent. I am blessed that through counseling and through your talks, we are able to make young parents aware of what they say and do with their children. Sometimes they say something and do something else and the children are confused. You know, they are not only confused, uh, Vinita, their value system takes a tumble. Is it to be done this way or is it to be done that way? Is this correct or is that correct? What is the meaning of giving bhashan and going on saying that, you know, you should uphold this value, you should do this? When in action people are doing and who is it? My own people whom I love, regard, hold them in high uh, level. When they are doing these sort of uh, you know, uh, things, what they say and what they uh, do, it creates havoc. It takes away the value system of the child. It can bring down the self-esteem of the child. And we carry it. If it is not resolved, we carry it lifelong. That is what we are observing. As all of you are aware, we run a free counseling service Anybody who feels like it can walk in or call us up on phone or send us an email. And day in and day out with so many people that we are dealing with, I realize that a lot of things which they are finding difficult, which they are not being able to cope with or where they are taking wrong decisions is because of this uh, uh, you know, craving for love which they did not get. And today they are getting manipulated by others because they have started believing that I'm not lovable. And when this person loves me, this person is actually doing me a favor. I don't want to lo lose this person because if I lose this person, I'll have nobody else to you know, love me or take care of uh, me. These are realities of life. And I, as I have been telling you, a lot depends on the childhood. Surekha says, when we are stuck in a mental rut about an unpleasant past, how do we get unstuck? Yes. Supposing something went wrong, be it in childhood or even if it is in later years, something went uh, uh, wrong and it has left me with very unpleasant and negative uh, you know, uh, memories. And as Surekha said, that you know is constantly sort of, you know, bugging uh, uh, me. 
the mental rut, as Sureka has rightly uh, pointed out. What happens? We get very upset with those negative memories. We want to try to push it away. We try to distract ourselves. We say, okay, let me sit and watch a nice, interesting movie. I will forget about this thing. Yes, you will forget about that thing till the movie lasts. Once the movie is over, those th negative thoughts hit you with greater intensity. And you feel even more miserable. It's like a person getting drunk to get away from his problems. And when the effect of the alcohol goes down and the hangover starts, he feels even worse. So that is not the way to you know, try to get away from uh, things. What I would recommend is welcome those thoughts. Tell those thoughts, OK, you want to bug me, no? You want to keep coming back even though this is over, past, done with? You're not letting me go? OK, come on, let's talk about it. Sit down in a quiet place, undisturbed, and let those thoughts roll all over you freely. You will realize yourself that after some time, the intensity of those thoughts start coming down. When you are ready for it, and when you realize that it is not hurting me as much as it was hurting earlier, that is when you start the process of rationalizing. Yes, this bad thing happened to me. Why did it happen? How did it happen? Could I have done something to prevent it? No, I could not have done anything to prevent it. So that's why I'm suffering from this thing. But that was in the past. In the present, what am I doing? How do I get out of this? How do I ensure that this does not keep bugging me all the time? The answer lies in working on it and rationalizing uh, uh, it. Take the help of somebody else if it is required. But you can do it, right? Vidya says, I'm seeing certain parents in my extended family who are growing their child by neither hitting or scolding. It's good. But for later age of the child, won't the child take advantage of that and think that I can do whatever I want because my parents will not say anything. See, let us differentiate between scolding and hitting. What I told earlier was a blanket no to hitting any form of physical abuse, capital punishment. Okay. But I never said no to scolding. When a child does something bad, you have to reprimand him. But the important thing, since we were talking about uh, self-esteem, which Sureka had brought up, when you are scolding the child, Please remember the basic principle. I think it is from the Bible or somewhere which says, hate the sin and not the sinner. Of course, sin and all that is very high found, profound uh, words. We will not go into that. But what I am saying is, scold the action and not the child. You are good for nothing. You are so clumsy. You always do these horrible things. You never listen to me. You are scolding the person. Putting down the self-esteem of that child, which he will carry through in his adult life. But pointing to the action and saying, you have broken the glass and I told you not to touch it because it was fragile. I had allowed you to go out and play under the instruction that by 6.30 you will be back. You came back at 7.10, which is 40 minutes late. And therefore, you are going to get a punishment. Decide about the punishment. Discuss the punishment. <coughs> Let even the punishment be constructive. Since you spent 40 minutes outside, today you are going to help in washing the dishes. You're going to be working extra. You're going to be studying another extra half an hour reading up that particular subject, which you find a little difficult. So let it be a constructive you know, punishment. 
and as soon as it is over give positive strokes to the child and let the child feel that i am still loved i am still worthy it was only my action which brought about these negative consequences vinita says i also think initial years of childhood have a long lasting impact on us i'm blessed that through counseling yes I, that already we have read which is the next uh, uh, one that is roshan says happy childhood will definitely influence growing years and today i have a wonderful friends around me yes i would actually like to extend that roshan to tell you why do you have uh, you know excellent friends around you friends are, are not like a lottery that they just pop out from somewhere it is you who have built firstly selected good friends learned how to differentiate between who is worthy of friendship and who is not and then you have given those friends something you have expressed and shown to them your love and affection your care your sincerity and because of that they have become those good friends as you said who care for you and who support uh, uh, you now why were you able to do that because you have good self esteem and you have not allowed yourself to feel that nobody loves me nobody is a good friend of mine nobody cares and these uh, things which happen when you have low self esteem ha krishna says giving strong critical feedback to our kids make them not love you many times we ensure we get the kids back to action on progress we pamper and this chain continues even after becoming adults how do we make them change without expecting in return yes you give strong critical feedback that you have not done your homework or you have hit your younger brother which is not permitted so you have given strong critical feedback and you know what the child will turn around and tell you you are the worst papa and the worst mama in the whole world i hate you fine what you have to do is to not get carried away emotionally by that impulsive statement smile back at the child and say oh right now you hate me because i pointed out your mistake right okay think it over i don't mind you given me the title of the worst papa in the whole world thank you very much i acknowledge that uh, title but i am still going to inculcate this discipline i'm still going to make you do your homework or to come back on time or to prevent you from hitting your uh, brother once you do that you will notice that over a period of time the child learns what is the meaning of true love the child learns to not only love the parent but also respect the parent regard the parent and use the parent as a role model this is what happens you have to be a little patient and you will see the results of when you grow up and that can be done much more effectively if you go through this little exercise which i told you earlier that is to introspect and review as an adult wherever and whatever you are today how much of that impact has been due to childhood and what can i do to bring about that uh, uh, change as i said earlier i am repeating again it's a continuous process you have to keep doing it now and then and you will notice that it starts enriching your life in different ways and also improving your relationships so with that before the clock strikes 12 i am going to wind up whatever it is it's just a simple reminder that next week we have a very interesting topic jealousy and possessiveness you'll be amazed without even our realizing how we become jealous how we become possessive how we have this envy all these things we need to again keep introspecting from time to time and that we shall be doing next uh, uh, saturday which is the 14th of uh, may so enjoy yourself Have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week ahead. Bye bye.